Hey, 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 what's going on YouTube? And welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross. I wanna thank you for clicking on this video. Uh, we have, I have a jam-packed video for you today where I will be talking about a bunch of different things when it comes to tagging. So one, uh, this, ta this video is really about best practices with tagging, but then also how to use uh, policies to enforce your tags. Um, but we will be talking about the approach in this video, uh, talk about you know some of the best practices that you'll use for uh, tagging, what you should think of when it comes to tagging. And then also I am going to give you um, another one, which is how to use a parent tag, which is a really good feature because it helps you uh, really see how much each resource costs you. Uh, if you have to go into your um, cost, you're gonna uh, have to go through resource type or resource group or even tags but this one really pulls everything together. You may have resources in other areas or you may have not all resources in the same resource group. This feature really helps you out with that. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit later in the video. So let's first talk, start off by defining what tags are. So tagging in Azure is a way to assign metadata to your Azure resources. Each tag consists of key value pairs that helps you organize and categorize your resource in ways that make them easier to manage and search. So here are some best practices for tagging. Um, so for one, you wanna standardize tag names and values, right? You wanna make sure you have a consistent um, way of applying tags to avoid any type of confusion, right? All team members should understand what these tags are. You wanna make sure you are applying some level of consistency within your environment. Then we have cost management tags. So. Uh, these tags are gonna be relevant to a cost sensor to facilitate cost allocation and chargeback. So you may have a tag like, you know, you might have a tag cost center and then you have a cost center number. This way you can now filter it within your environment. Then um, we have leverage built-in policies. So we are all human, we make mistakes. This is why Azure policies are so really good because if you tell it to do X, it's going to do X until you tell it to stop doing X. So we want to make sure we are enforcing tagging um, within the environment because tags will help us in terms of security, compliance, and also just make sure that we tag things in the right way so we can make sure that we know what's going on in our environment. So then it's automate and tag process. That one is if you are utilizing some type of IAC, so you might be doing Terraform in your environment, you want to make sure that all of your code has some tagging in it. But then on the other end, what you can do is you can have policies. So this in case something doesn't have a tag, you can do a require or you could do a append to that resource. And I will get into that a little bit later about those two type of the different effects that you have for Azure policies when it comes to tagging. And then finally, the last one here, which we have is uh, tagging for governance and security, which is really important. So you wanna identify critical resources. Let's just say for that, you might have a critical tag to prioritize, monitor, and apply stricter security controls. Or you can may have a tag, which is a compliance tag, something like a GDPR or HIPAA to uh, make sure that your environment um, uh, with, with, is doing what you need to do within your environment. And then another one I just thought of, which I don't have it up there, is just educate in, and training your teams, right? You wanna conduct training sessions to educate teams about the importance of tagging and how to implement them effectively. So you have tags there, but it's important to really go through with your team and say, okay, this is why we're doing these tags, so everybody's on the same page. That is a part of the cloud adoption framework because a lot of times what happens when I go into work and I'm working with these clients, you know, you'll talk to one team and another team has no idea what team A is doing or they don't find it any importance. Um, but I'm in the meetings with both teams and I can see where the gaps are um, and both teams have a critical role within the environment or doing things in the environment, but the other team doesn't know. So it's really important that you provide this information, educate your staff so that this way that information permeates throughout the organization. Okay, so let's get into tags, right? Um, and one thing I'm not gonna PowerPoint you to death, we're gonna get in front of the uh, Azure portal. I just wanna go through this stuff so I can explain it to you. So here are tags. Uh, we have tag value, we have app name, which is app one, app two, app three as our values. And then we have region, which are our, our values for region could be either North Central US, East US or West US. And then we have environment tag, which we have our values could be prod, dev, test. And then another tag, remember we were talking about the security and governance, 
uh, we have it as yes or no. So I just wanted to put up a couple few tags here. Um, probably won't go through all these through the video, but I wanted to make sure I added these here because, you know, I just wanted to go through this with you all so you can see how we can apply it. Okay, so we are in front of the Azure portal. I have a Log Analytics workspace that I'm going to apply a tag. So I want to show you how to go about doing tags from a manual standpoint. You click on your resource. It doesn't have to be a Log Analytics workspace, but if you have one, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on tags, and then what I'll do is I'll call it have a name. So one of our tags was called environment. So I'm going to come here, environment, and I'm going to say test. And now we have our test uh, tag. So if I come over here and I go to overview and I come back here to tags, I have a environment test tag that's associated with it. And you can see down here, it says environment test. So those, that's another tag that I applied there. So if I wanted to apply another tag, let's say if I did region East US. All right, I think I had a low case, either or, um, you guys get the gist. And I click apply and you'll see down here how it changes. You see, now there's more tags associated over here on this one, all right? Um, but now, you know, that's a manual way of doing it. Now, let's say if we wanted to do it from a, a policy way, how would we go about doing that? So that goes into Azure policies, right? There are three types of effects for tagging policies. There's modify, deny, and there's append. So over here, we're at the Microsoft page, and it says assign a policy definition for tag compliance. So remember, we have these three types of um, effects. So if I come down here, this is where you will see the built-in policies within Azure. So this is add a tag to a resource group. I can do that. Add specific, adds a specific specified tag and value when any resource group missing this tag is created or updated. And right here, it says a modify. Right, add a tag to a resource. This is modify. This is stuff if it's already in production, it's already in your test environment, then these are the tags that you would associate it with, right? Add a tag to subscriptions, add a replace tag on resource groups. You know, here's these modify, modify, and then finally we get to append, right? Over here is append the tag and its value from the resource group, right? Append the specified tag with its value from the resource group when any resource is missing, this tag is created or updated. And you have a bunch here. I'm not going to read through all of these. I really just want to really focus on the um, the effects. And right here we have enforce a required tag and its value on resource groups, right? So require a tag and its value on resource groups. So I can do this where I have a tag needs to be um, on a resource group. If I try to create a resource group and it doesn't have a tag, then um, it will be denied, right? It'll get a message. It require a tag and its value on resources. So if I go to provision a new resource and they do not have um, this tag, I will deny it. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and try one of these deny tags with you and see exactly what happens there. So let me go ahead and go into Azure policies. I'm gonna go over here to definitions. I'll put require. Let's do a tag. And then right here, we have a bunch of require tags, right? So this is before we go ahead and provision something. Require tag on resources. Require tag on its value on resources. So um, this is just require tag. Let's do a require tag and its value. And let's see where we wanna apply this policy. So I have a different scope. I can do uh, a management group if I wanted to at the tenant root level, or I can do a subscription. I'll do this subscription and I can choose a resource group. I will just zone it out to a resource group in particular and I'll click next. Um, I won't put anything here. Um, and then here I will say um, environment and I'll just do test. Uh, like that and remediation. Um, I can do a remediation so this way it goes ahead and it changes stuff that's already set up, but I don't really need it for that. And I will say something like for a compliance message and then I'll do review and create 
and I will create that policy. So the policies do take a little time to go into effect. So we're gonna allow this policy to go into effect. It's something that we can do. We can do a start AZ compliance scan, um, which that will kind of speed things up a bit. So let's go ahead and we can try that out. So I'll go here. And if you're following along with me, if you don't have a storage account, you have to go ahead and create a storage account associated with the cloud shell. That's how it's going to work. Um, but perhaps you may have your PowerShell on a, a Windows machine or you have it on your local machine. You can just run it from there as well. Totally up to you. I'm just going through the cloud PowerShell. Okay, so what I am going to do now is I'm going to do a start. AZ policy compliance scan and what that should do is it should run the compliance scan so it's kind of speed it up in the environment because if I go into my policies and I go to assignments require a tag in this value if I click on it you view compliance it says compliance state not started. So what this command does is it just tries to speed it up a little bit. It does take a little while. So what I'll do is I'm going to pause this video and then come back to it once this Azure compliance scan is completed. And then this way we could try to provision a resource. Okay, our policy now says compliance state non-compliant. So it's letting us know 19 resources aren't compliant, which we knew that was gonna happen because this is a new policy and we're saying require um a certain uh tag and it's not gonna the other the other resources were already provisioned so that's why so what i want to do now is i want to test this out right so remember our our definitions is going to deny if we don't have the right appropriate tag so i'm going to go here i'm going to go into my logic app and i'm going to create a logic app just for um just to test out the policy make sure it works and i'm going to throw it to our rg east us because that's one that we had it for um, and then right here, I'm just going to call it a nap name. So logic test cloud scholars one, uh, leave everything as standard. I'll go to storage. We have to create a storage account with this as well. Um, we could just call it this, whatever new storage you're going to create, um, networking. We leave it with that way. It's fine. Monitoring. We're not doing any application insights. Oh, we are. Okay. We'll throw application insights in there as well. And then we have tags, we can add a tag here, but we're not going to do it because we want to make sure our policy is doing the right thing. So right here, validation is passed. Um, so let's click create and let's see what kind of error message we get. All right, great. So we did get an error message. And if we go to our error message, we'll see if we click on it, it says resource logic test cloud scholars one. That's what we called it was disallowed by policy. And it says policy require a tag and its value on resources. So this says reason you did not put a tag on this resource. So let me come back here and let me go to tags. I don't remember if I called it environment um, test in the policy, but let's see, I'll just call it something else. So we have a, a couple other things that we had, right? So let's go back to our PowerPoint and let's see. Oh, so you see right there, it already has some stuff there for us. So let's do region and we'll call it East US. And then let's do a review and create. Okay, so template fail with multiple errors. Uh, reason it says um, policy, let's click on it. Let's see, you did not put a tag on this resource. So look, so my compliance state, it's, it's so this, so let me go back to the tag, right? So let's go back and let's look at that definition. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna go to policy, and this is why it's really important that your compliance message states what it needs to state. So I go to the definitions and actually let's go to assignments. I should be able to get it from there. Require a tag as resources. Let's view definition. Nope, not here. 
Let's see if I did edit assignment. It's going to give me that. Yep, this is what I want to see. So if I come here to non-compliant message, um, so let's see, parameters, we have environment test. So I have to put environment test in. But my compliance message, and this is a good catch because my compliance message doesn't really say anything, right? So it says you do not put a tag on this resource. Please input environment and test. Right, so this is a good thing for me to have, right? Is that you have to put an environment test. So let me come back here now. I'm gonna go to tags and I'll take this one out, environment test, and then I'll go review and create and let's see what happens. All right, now deployment is in progress. So that is good. The deployment is in progress for this um, for this resource and we need to put environment test. So this is good because I just put in a compliance message, right, uh, right here, right? So this message, let me go edit assignment and non-compliance message. I just had a message in there, but it was very generic. I It doesn't help anybody out if you have an engineer to say, okay, well, what did I do wrong? So this is a way they can now enforce the right information in there. So it's really important to have that um, set up in the right way. And then you also have a non-compliance message that makes sense because that one didn't make sense, but obviously I'm the one that's doing it. But if I was setting this up and had another engineer architect working, they would say, okay, well, what am I missing? They would have to go into the policy, look at the policy and like I did and realize, oh, we need to have an environment tag uh, associated with the resource. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to break this into two videos. Uh, so I have the first one, which today, which we went over, what is an Azure tag? Um, you know, talked about best practices, talked about strategy towards how to use Azure tag, showed you how to use it from a manual standpoint. And then I also showed you how to enforce it from a policy standpoint. So that this way that moving forward, all your resources uh, will have those tags, either if it's pre-deployment or if it's uh, post-deployment. So that's really how I broke this video down. Uh, so the next video I really wanna show you, which is a really great tool, is how to do a tag from the parent, a parent tag within Azure. That one's probably gonna be a short video, but still at the same time, it's something that is, I think you should watch. Um, I just wanna make sure I break this video down in less than 18 minutes. I think I'm close to that, if that. So once again, I wanna thank you all for watching this video. Please watch part two, so that this way you can really get an understanding of this new feature um, that I um, came across and I really like it, it really helps with cost. So if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.